Today I'm speaking with Helena Smolak. Um, thanks for coming and speaking with me today, Helena. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for, for inviting me, Jen. Yes, Thank of you. course. Yes. <laughs> um, I always ask my guests, um, tell me who and um, <laughs> tell me who you are. Uh, introduce yourself. Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, again, thank you for, for having me as a guest on, on Solo Moms. Uh, my name is uh, Helena Smolak. I'm from born and raised in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And mm -hmm. um, it, it was there that I, I started my fitness career uh, for 39 beautiful years. And in 94, I moved to British Columbia, Canada to escape the, the, the cold minus 40 weather in Ottawa and um, been on the West Coast since then. And in 2012, I met uh, my amazing husband and now I live with him in Blaine, Washington, USA. <laughs> USA. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I, I, um, I came to British Columbia too for the weather and it, it's not happening. <laughs> and it's so cold, right? It's so, when I left Ottawa, cause we have what it's dry, cold in out East, Eastern Canada, mm -hmm. United States. Yeah. And when I moved to BC, I thought, yay, no more snow. Oh my goodness. My first year it snowed and I don't know if uh, you know where Granville street is. All mm -hmm. the buses were backed up. They couldn't get up that little hill on Granville street. I thought, Oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah. yes, it's damp. It's very damp on the West coast and mm -hmm. I found it much more colder. Yes. Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I always like to use that as a warm up, you know. Yeah. So you you told me you're a solo mom, and this is solo mom's talk. So tell us how you became a solo mom. Um, well, first I was a solo mom. Um, I guess it was. Geez, time flies. <laughs> um, I think it was two thousand and five. Yes, 2005, um, you know, becoming a solo mom is not exactly, uh, it, I think it takes a while to think about that, you know, before you admit this is not working, it, it's just not working. And so you develop these fear factors that run through your mind uh, on, mm -hmm. on how, how are, are you going to survive, right? Uh, because all of a sudden you're wearing these different hats, uh, added hats that, you know, just yeah. you thought you wouldn't be wearing. And so you become mom, you become dad, you become the career mom, um, you become the manager, you become all these different personalities all rolled up into this one individual that's, you know, uh, carrying so much uh, responsibility. And so when I made that decision to finally admit, okay, gotta, gotta be happy, right? Uh, the most important thing, my important message out there to anybody that is experiencing um, disharmony in the environment, don't think that your children are not listening mm. or they're not seeing what's going on. Yes. They are absorbing everything and they begin to act it out, you know, through, through yeah. behavior uh, it, and it affects them just as much as it's affecting you. So, you know, it affects them in behavior, their emotional stability, mental stability. It affects their schooling, uh, how they relate with other children as well, how they develop friendships. So for me, it was, it was one day, you know, I worked full time and he, obviously he didn't. And so 
walked into the house and the house was upside down, kids running in and out of the place. And then I was asked, what's for dinner? Not for my, my child. So I thought, no, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I thought, okay, no, this this is um, not the way to live, you know, because mm. I, I deal with customers all day long. You know, you're going to get different personalities come in, and you know they're going to affect you in different ways. Some people will be grumpy, some people will be so friendly with you, and then you go home to what's for dinner, and you go, okay, I've just dealt with the general public, I'm exhausted, and no, you're going to make dinner. So it was that moment I thought, enough. You know, I might as well do this on my own, right? And I'm certain there's a lot of women out there that, that think the same way, but you become so fearful, well, how am I going to carry all this responsibility? It is not easy, and I, you know, completely uh, agree with that. But your sanity is more important as well as your children's sanity. Most important, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. Yeah. It was that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, too, what's very important is to maintain a peaceful resolution to the separation. You know, don't get the kids involved, don't blame the kids and, you know, make it peaceful as much as possible. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. And that's normal. You know, some people just want to get, make it harder for the other individual, make it harder for the children. Uh, the one strategy I used was, you know what, this is not working. You have a month to find your own place and we will, you know, one week he, you know, he'll be with dad, one week he'll be with me, and and let's just keep it between the adults and not to bring child in, in between and cause riffraff, um, because that's stressful, right? Dealing with an individual that's just not going to be on the same wavelength as you. And I was very lucky. Yeah. It, it was very peaceful. Um, you know, it was good. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, and yes, it's, um, it's not an easy call to make, um, you know, especially if it's your decision to, to go down that path. Um, and there's never an easy answer to what to do, you know, and unless he's beating you to the pulp, to pulp or something, you know, but, 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 um, Yes, there's a lot of responsibility associated with being a solo mom. And sometimes we, you know, we take it on, right? We absorb it and internalize it and just destroy ourselves as solo moms, right? So can you tell me what was your yeah. biggest challenge? I, I saw that the picture you painted of walking in on the chaos and being asked for dinner, I saw that, right? But tell us after after that, because that's challenge, that's big challenge. And and so uh, can you tell us what your big your biggest challenge was after making that decision? Um well you know, Jen, I, I come from a family, you know, my parents owned restaurants in Ottawa. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm I'm the eldest of five kids. Now, before my brothers came along, I was responsible for myself and my my two sisters, my siblings. So, it it wasn't hard for me to make that snap de decision, um, because I thought I'm employed. And it was at the crossroads where I, I was working part-time, but then I had a, a job offer to work full-time to manage a gym, making a good salary. So whether it was divine guide, guidance, um, I made sure, and I, I, and I recommend this to any single mother out there, to remain uh, an like anchored. Because once... When we think of uh, the pillars, right, 
pillars can crumble and fall. Well, as a human being, especially us women, we can crumble and fall as well. So you need to develop mm -hmm. that foundation. Anchor yourself. Keep your feet on the ground. Do not be, lift them up and, and feel like you're floating. And I, I know it's hard. It's, it's difficult, especially um, if you're coming from out of a very abusive um, relationship. When I say abuse, physical abuse, uh, I've, I've gone through that. I've, I've been in a shelter with other women that were much worse off. Uh, so when I thought about my situation, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, at least I'm, I'm, I'm like this, um, uh, a foundation. I'm just, okay, I've got to make this work for myself and most importantly, my child. So when I made that mm -hmm. effort to make that decision, when I walked into the tornado, we'll call it the tornado because that's exactly what it is, right? It's, it's like this. <laughs> this yeah, place, all right. And you just go, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Uh, so the most important thing for me was um, reflecting as well um, about my grandmother on my mother's side who back in the day, now let's think about this, in the villages where she lived in Lebanon, where she grew up, you don't dare leave your husband. Back in those days, you do not, mm -hmm. you take all the abuse and for the community's sake, you remain together. You don't want people talking mm -hmm. bad about you, right? She no, didn't just in listen to that. <laughs> she actually mm. her, her daughter, my, you know, my aunt, and she left. Now, can you imagine what mm -hmm. my grandmother faced? Um, so, mm. but, you know, the point of this conversation is when I was growing up, she would sit all the girls in a circle and tell us, you never let a man hit you. You never let a man talk bad at you or hit the children. He has to respect you because you, you cook, you clean, you have the babies and all that, you know? And so I had to reflect on that, that one day I thought my grandmother would not stand for this. So that was mm -hmm. my, my foundation, right? That was where yeah. I, I anchored myself. Those words resonated through my whole being, I thought, oh my gosh, grandma would not stand for this. So um, that was my my point, my turning point. And yeah. Yeah. one of the things, you know, when we, when we think about that journey of being alone, right? Nobody wants to be alone. It's, it's reality. Mm -hmm. Um but you're not alone. You're, you've got your children. Yeah. And, and yeah. you need to think about yeah. your children. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I, I grasped my, I grasped that those words from my grandmother. And I also had faith now, however you want to look at it, whether you believe in God, Jesus, Lakshmi, Ganesh, uh, you know, you go to a Buddhist temple, whatever, find that anchor because that's your foundation. That's what's going to keep you strong. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge part of my journey was anchoring myself, having my downtime, allowing myself to, yes, be disappointed that wow, you know, here I am. And on the last day that his father left, he found his own place. He took everything. He left a pot on the stove for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, I, you know, I have to laugh about it now because when you reflect on that and where I've gone through, I laugh about it because I didn't fail. 
I did not allow myself to fail. Um, yeah. Now, not everybody would feel and think this way because especially if there's abuse, right? That's a whole different journey. Yeah. Um, so. mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, I, I find a lot of similarities between our stories. Um, but I won't get into that right now. Um, <laughs> I, I want to talk about your, 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 you know, what you do, um, as a career. And so tell us about, um, you know, your training and your training program, how you got into that, what led you to, you know, to, to a career in, uh, being an athlete and doing athletic training? Um, well, it started back in, actually, I can honestly reflect back into my childhood, my youth years. Um, I was more uh, self-driven. So my parents worked a lot. And so, like I said earlier, I was responsible for myself and my two siblings. Um, and the school was like just down the street from our house. So it was so convenient to stay after school and, and take part in uh, softball, volleyball, soccer. Um, so it, it started from there. And then it just followed me into high school um, where at Woodruff High School, I was on the track team, uh, but we also played volleyball and um, we competed around the city. So at that point, my, my career, actually, the, the only thing I ever thought of becoming was a criminal lawyer. That's all I ever talked about. And that's all mm -hmm. I read about uh, because I was so determined on that career now in grade 13 um in ontario i don't know if they still have it but it's like your pre-university year and so i thought you know what i don't want to spend the whole day in school because it's you know past grade 12 you just go okay enough all day having <laughs> sitting in a class all day long so what i asked for was to gain work experience but then gain credits through that work experience so they, um, I was placed in the courthouse, uh, criminal division in Ottawa. And so I navigated through the system, learned a lot about, you know, our wonderful country and its uh, criminal laws and, and all that lovely stuff. And they must have known that I'm Miss Softy because they put me in a court case, which was actually a murder case. And mm. it was, you know, I sat there, I was about 18 and I, you know, they bring out all the evidence and you just, and the photos, because, you know, they take photos of crime scenes. And I just went, oh my goodness, what if this was a child? And then, you, you know, I'm sitting there listening to the story of how this murder manifested. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow. Can I handle this listening to the human condition, <clears throat> excuse me, and how they can, how, how we can destroy each other. Um, and I thought, I can't do this. So it was at that point, um, I did have a part-time job with a local gym. And again, it was down the street from where we lived. And I taught aerobic classes, high impact, low impact, uh, aquafit, I put women on weight training programs as well. And there it was, staring at me in the face, my, my fitness <laughs> career. And, yeah, mm. it was like God was saying, uh, you know you know what? I don't think you're going to be a criminal lawyer. You're not built for that. You're more built to help people mm. with their health and wellness. So um, I was so grateful that that was on my path. Because when you hit that fork, you go, which road am I going to take, right? So yeah, there I was. Yeah. There I was yeah. bouncing. I was taking 15 classes a week. And um, it just grew. It it came to me. Uh, so yeah. that, that was the journey. Um, since then, it, my career has grown into management, 
uh, corporate consulting, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, offering personal training services. I've owned studios as well. So it's, it, it's been so rewarding because I've helped so many people. And it, yes, was, it did yes. begin with helping women uh, because I did work at Catherine's Lady Fitness in Ottawa, which was a huge fitness facility. Um, so it, it's been a wonderful journey and I want to continue it. Uh, this fork now is Master Athlete. So I am 57. I am not mm. <laughs> 60 anymore. Uh, my body... Oh, I have a lot of energy. I had a good, tough workout earlier. And I thought, hey, this is what 57 looks like. And I just, I was just moving my body like, like, yeah, yeah. like I was, 16. you know, doing the moves that my body knows with high impact, yes. low impact movement. And yes. it's just up here, right? It's mm -hmm. how you look at life. Yeah. I'm 57. Am I going to run around and say, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I'm 57. Oh my gosh. Oh. No, you, you're not going to accomplish anything with that tr train of thought. So mm -mm. motivation, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a strong proponent of um, going with purpose, you know, in whatever you do in life, whether it's for money or not. And sometimes we miss our purpose because we're so intent, we're so bent and going after what we want. Right. And, right. and in your right. case, you, you recognized it. Because you could have said, well, you know, working in a gym, you know, who, who wants to work in a gym? I want to be a, you know, but, but you looked at that and yeah. So it's funny how, how often we missed our, miss our calling because we just couldn't see. Yeah. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I can look at it in a sense that my grandfather and I have looked at it this way, on my mother's side, he, his lineage, actually he was a healer. So I watched him, he, he would have so many people go to him and he would do the laying of hands. This is what we call it in Reiki. Mm -hmm. I'm a Reiki master as well. So laying of, okay. of hands, wherever there's pain in the, the individual's body or there's blockage, you lay your hands there. Mm -hmm. and, and so I watched that as a child. And so, I realized that that's the journey that I'm to be on. And when you recognize that journey and you, you hone into it, everything else starts to flourish. Like for mm -hmm. example, you know, I, I was manager uh, and, and partner at body moves in Ottawa. Uh, I was on television in Ottawa. So when people see that sparkle that passion that you have in helping others especially with attaining optimal health people know that they recognize it and they go wow she really cares about me she really recognizes yeah. that you know I, I need help in this area whether it's nutrition strength flexibility cardio you know people feel that vibe from you um and mm -hmm. and it you accept everybody Right? It's not yes. specific to yes. one individual or one type of ind individual. It's yeah. everybody. And um, when you share that vibe, it gets picked up right away. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing worse than going to a personal trainer who's, you know, full of themselves. And I've had <laughs> clients come to me because they've gone to trainers that, they're looking more in the mirror than watching their own client, right? So people feel that and they see it. Yes, yes. Uh, and I can relate to the, you know, the personal trainers that just don't have your interests at heart. They just come with their preconceived plan and mm -hmm. not realizing that, you know, they're not looking at a 20 year old male, you know, you're looking at a 50 year old woman. It's totally different, you know? Yeah. So I can relate. 
yeah, women, this is the thing. Women are, we are built differently. Our system is different. It operates differently. And so, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not trying to dodge any male trainers out there. Everybody's gifted in their own special way. Um, but there's nothing worse than hearing when a client comes to you from someone else and they say, well, I've been on fat burners. Well, that's not the answer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the answer mm -hmm. is to balance out your hormones. Now, for uh, single moms, let's think about this. Um, we are, again, wearing the many hats. Uh, we have different responsibilities. And mm -hmm. we can be very emotional. So this is, again, finding that anchor, your foundation, plant your feet, and prioritize things. First of all, yeah. most importantly, you need to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And not just physically, mentally yeah. and emotionally. Allow yourself to go through the motion of that loss. Because really, yeah. when, when you do decide to be on your own, you've lost that other individual to be with you. Mm -hmm. You've made that decision to <clears throat> maintain a new life with your children. So find your foundation, anchor yourself, find moments of peace. That is so important. I've had to do that every day, every day. Yes. My son's yes. on his own now. But when he was with me, it was, you know, <clears throat> he'd go off to bed and I would find my peace. Because if you don't find that, if you, get wrapped up in, you know, listening to your boss, listening to the customers, uh, and not everybody's going to be nice to you, you know, and there's mm -hmm. always that, that, um, misconception of single moms too. We, we tend to have yeah. to get bad raps, you know, Oh, you're by yourself. Yeah. Well, what happened? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. well, what happened is I decided to take control of my situation. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and there's nothing wrong with taking control of the situation. Um, you know, you try to find that peaceful resolution within yourself. You need mm -hmm. it. I would do, you know, light up a candle, incense, and just close my eyes and just breathe, recenter, release. Uh, I had, th you know, and I would go through my day. I would think, okay, this person, um, you know, put me in a bad mood during the day because whatever issue they were having. So you just clear that all out because to the next day you have to deal with it again, or hopefully you don't have to deal yep. with it. Um, yeah. So constant clearing, constant balancing yourself, um, breathing and Paying attention to what's going on with your, your child or your children. That yeah. is so important, right? Um, yes. One of the things I established with my son was family discussion. So we would uh, sit down after dinner and talk about how his day was and how my day went. Yeah. One of the things I said to prior to the discussions was you can say whatever you want to me. And it's same with me. I can say whatever I want to you. And I tell you, <laughs> there were days when, Oh, I was, you know, <laughs> I would have to swallow what he was saying to me because sometimes he'd be insulting me. I'm mm -hmm. like, Oh my God, why is he talking this way to me? But, but I had to maintain <laughs> that anchor because he needed mm -hmm. to speak. He needed to say, mom, this is bothering me. Da, 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 da. Right. And I allowed, yeah, it. Yeah. I allowed communication because if you don't do that, what can happen yes. is you can have the friends starting to influence and sometimes they're not making mm -hmm. the best friends. So yes, yes. Way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. 
Awesome. I, I love the idea of the anchor because I see where it helps and it can help the solo mom three ways. So one way you mentioned was um, you're using your grandmother's experience and your relationship with her. You learn that you didn't have to take stuff that, you know, didn't benefit right. you or your children. And so it, it made the it made the decision to leave um, more palatable, right? You didn't anchor down and take more mm -hmm. because you were scared because you had that anchor, right? I want to get in. Right. I want to reiterate it because I think it's very important. Um, the second way you did it was yeah. in your career, right? You had that. You had that experience, and that's why I think. Parental uh, experience is so important to children because the the effect, the negative effect, is far reaching, <laughs> and and we don't understand that, right? You know, we don't understand it until maybe we're in a situation where we are solo parenting, then we realize how much of the crap we got from our, or didn't get from our parents infiltrate into how we parent our kids right so i'm very you know i'm i'm very um interested in the anchor um you know analogy that you run i saw it help you in your career yes yeah yes. that's okay go ahead yeah yeah uh, you can anchor you can develop that and then i teach this to corporate women um and i've okay. i've teach it to clients you know mm -hmm. it's it's a system that you need to mentally develop and yes. the problem with us women is that we are put in a situation of fight or flight right stress mm -hmm. we yes. automatically get emotional and 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 mentally we become weak now yes when when my grandmother used to describe what happened to her in in that little village that she grew up in i mean right away i i recall the way her body would change she would just get up and she would put her hands on her hips and take charge of teaching us mm -hmm. you don't let anybody you don't let a man you know anybody whether it's a male yes. or a female nobody should be abused or or yes. belittled or you know treated in a way that they're feeling insignificant so mm -hmm. with, with that, that anchor for me her body language changed her facial expression would change you know and she would become so passionate yes. about what she was teaching her granddaughters so for me, yeah. I feel blessed for that. And uh, now not yeah. everybody has experienced that. One of the things I always felt was that I can do whatever is put in front of me. As long as I am anchored, I believe that this is why I said you need to find something like whether it's God, whether it's Jesus, you know, sit down in your quiet time when you're not, you know, your children aren't around you. They're in bed. Uh, you don't have um, anything else distracting you. You need to go inside and and reflect what mm -hmm. brought you to that, that, that space of being yes. a single parent. Um, yeah. I also recommend talking to someone if you need to if it's too much you need mm -hmm. to speak to somebody uh surround yes. yourself this is the one thing i made sure of that i was surrounded by friends that were humble and mm -hmm. we had a great time together uh, so i would invite friends over i would have dinner parties you know so so that your children my child would see oh we're, we're having fun, right? So, so you're not always feeling down. You know, surround yourself yeah. with those individuals that are going to lift you up and they're going to love you and support you. 
and not, this is so important. Don't be around people that are going to judge you. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, single moms, yeah. even dads, they get judged. Oh, must be a yes. loser. Oh, must be, I don't want to say the B yep. word. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want that around you. So surround yourself with people that are just going to embrace you and say, you're doing great. Keep going. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. that's what I did. Yeah. And, and my son yes. saw that and people would look at my son and say, Oh, he's such a beautiful young man. He's so smart. And, and it's because I made sure he was able to communicate to me. Um, I was able to communicate with him. He saw mm-hmm. that I worked. You know, we understood mom's the manager. She's like the boss. Da, da, da. <laughs> right? Yes, um, yes. And there, yeah. are, there are so many successful single mothers out there as well. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, a absolutely. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So. I'm sorry. Well, we have to kind of wonder the the new way, this new, um, I think the statistics are much higher Mm -hmm. with people counting. And the reason why I say that is because in 1996, I believe, um, myself and a group of uh, individuals in Vancouver, we did a... um, a short uh, film on love in the nineties. And so what Mm. we did was we looked at the demographics of, and statistics of single parents. And in British Columbia alone, there were more single mothers out of all of the rest of Canada. Vancouver Mm -hmm. had the highest number, statistically speaking, of single moms. So, um, I don't know what the, what it is now. Um, but Mm -hmm. it was interesting to look at that. Yeah. There, there, there are a lot all over and I, I think they get miscounted for different reasons. And I saw one person posted on Facebook that they, um, they didn't consider themselves a single mom because, you know, well, dad was in the picture. So <laughs> and I'm like, oh, girl, you're so single. But anyway, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, yeah, that, yeah, it, exactly. is, it is. You need yeah. to decipher or understand, hey, I might, I'm in this relationship and, you know, you're, you're doing everything, but you're, you're not together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I understand. Says, yeah. Why do I think, so why are we even together? Um, and it's yeah. not just that. It's, it's responsibilities, right? There has to be 50-50. Mm-hmm. You have to respect yeah. each other to know well, he works, she, you know, I work. And, you know, you got to, in my situation, um, too, was, uh, it, it was like a roller coaster, you know, up and down yeah. and around. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Just go, mm-hmm. okay, stop this roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not because, fair. you know, uh, it's not yeah, yeah. Because, you know, as much as we'd like to disagree, the kids are anchored to mom. You know, they are, I to use your terminology, they're anchored to mom, you know. Yes. And if that's not yes. anchored to them, then you you are mothering solo most of the time you know that's right so <laughs> i mean we could we could go on with this conversation forever but it, it is what it is you know so <laughs> it is what it is and the times, yes, is. exactly i don't yeah. think it was so yeah. prevalent in my grandmother's time or you know i don't think there was a high level of single parents only because mm-hmm. like yeah. i said you know, the community, you don't, you don't do such a thing. You stay and mm-hmm. go through those motions, but it's not healthy. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Well, this is an interesting conversation. I, I think we should do more of it. But um, I want you to tell me about this Velocity Athletic Training Radio and um, tell us how we could get in touch with you. Thank you. Um, I am the creator and host of Velocity Athletic Training Radio, which I began in British Columbia on Block Talk Radio. It was not a visual mm -hmm. show. Uh, yeah. It was more mm -hmm. you know, talking. Uh, so we've tra I've transferred that onto YouTube uh, to, you know, go okay. with the times now because that's what it is. And mm -hmm. um, so with that, I, I like to discuss everything that has to do under the umbrella of health and wellness. So it, health and wellness to me includes mental, emotional, physical environment. How are we uh, making our own environments healthy as well? For example, you know, mm -hmm. um, how are you, are you drinking uh, spring water or are you drinking tap water? Like everything that has to do with, with, uh, becoming healthy and strong and maintaining yes. a healthy mind and emotions. So I invite various guests that I think, um, fit that, um, you can get a hold of me at www.velocityathletictraining.com. That's my website. My email is okay. iwin, I-W-I-N, at velocityathletictraining.com. Okay. All right. Thank you. And we'll put those, um, we'll put the, the links in the show notes so people can find you. Thank you. I'm on social yeah. media as yeah. well. Uh, so LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. There's so many out what? there now. <laughs> okay. What, what's your Instagram handle? Oh, so Instagram is at Velocity Rocks. At, um, okay. On Twitter, at Velocity Athlete. And okay. LinkedIn, Helena Smolock, Velocity Athletic Training. I can email you all those. Um Okay. And I think that's good. All right. I appreciate it. And um, I want you to tell us what services you offer, because we really haven't talked about that before you, you know, before I let you go. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so I offer various personal training packages uh, that fit, okay. you know, whatever your budget, your, your, uh, I always recommend the one month, then we go into three month, six month, and then one year. I also offer mm -hmm. the corporate woman foundations to health and wellness, as well as okay. the corporate man foundations to health and wellness. Uh, I okay. also offer a 30 minute um, inspiration and motivation video. Uh, so I will put something together for you, uh, create some music where you take that and we, we work together on that. Um, I do outdoor conditioning classes as well as indoor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and we'll put, we'll put as many links in the show notes as necessary so people can get in touch with you. Thank you very much. Sure. And thank you very much, Helena Smolock, for coming and talking to me today. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing, you know, allowing me to share. I appreciate it. Hopefully it helps Absolutely. someone out there. Yeah, I'm sure it will. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Okay, there we go.